The earthquake in Japan is prompting concerns about whether some buildings in the United States would be able to withstand a similar disaster. We have a report from special correspondent Anna Werner about seismic safety risks in many California schools. Her story was jointly produced by the Center for Investigative Reporting and KQED Television. Two miles from the sea along the coast sits the town of Pescadero, population 2042. It's where Brian Burns lives and works on his family's ranch. Our family's been in, the, in Pescadero roughly about 116 years. The town built its middle and high schools on property his family used to own. I knew that the earthquake fault went through the property. I didn't know exactly where. So Burns started asking questions about the safety of those school buildings. What did you find out about your schools? That most of the buildings are uncertified. Most construction has been illegally done. Illegal under a state law known as the FIELD Act, which says all school construction projects must be certified as earthquake resistant. The law was put into place after the devastating 1933 Long Beach earthquake. 70 schools collapsed and 120 people died. And when Burns and fellow resident Jeff Gananian looked further, they found structural work was done on their school without the state's approval. That's when the light bulb went on. And we began to realize that there are potentially thousands and thousands of other projects. People won't find out until a disaster happens or an earthquake happens. And at that point, it's too late. I don't want to see kids get killed. And the risks are statewide. A California Watch investigation finds thousands of school projects don't comply with the FIELD Act. And those schools aren't just in small districts like Pescadero. The Los Angeles Unified School District finished this new middle school just six years ago. Yet state records indicate that huge window walls, three stories high, may not be properly anchored. Even the original architect on that project, Jim Smith, says those windows, as constructed, could pose a risk to students in an earthquake. The whole window wall could come out or glass shattering, and obviously if that happens, it's not a good situation. And what would your concern be? They could be injured. The state agency charged with enforcing school earthquake regulations is the Division of the State Architect, or DSA. When California Watch brought its questions there... I'm going to tell you there is no evidence that children, children are in unsafe buildings. Scott Harvey is acting director of the Department of General Services, which oversees that division. He says California Watch's investigation did uncover problems, but mainly with incomplete files. Can we do a better job of that? Absolutely. Should we streamline that? Absolutely. But Harvey insists... I don't think those files have led to any uh, safety violations. I don't think we have ever put a child at risk. In fact, the FIELD Act ensures that California kids are in the safest buildings nationally. But a California Watch review of the DSA's own records suggests the problems are more serious. This 2006 report concluded that some school projects were being completed without adequate testing and inspection, sometimes with dangerous construction flaws. What that tells me is that we're building schools in California that are not properly uh, designed uh, and uh, checked in the field to make sure they're properly built. That's a problem. Peter Yanev is an earthquake engineer and consultant. That obviously the system is uh, not doing what it's supposed to do. And it's not just the thousands of uncertified school projects. California has another major problem. Old schools that were constructed before stricter building codes took effect in 1978. State Senator Ellen Corbett, a longtime earthquake safety advocate, commissioned a study to identify those schools over a decade ago. There wasn't statewide information about where the needs were. Corbett's study produced this list, more than 7,500 school buildings statewide considered most at risk. One of them, Philadelphia Elementary in Pomona. District Administrator Scott Stark. We've got schools that are, that are old and uh, that have been you know, deteriorating over the years. State evaluators said four of Philadelphia's seven buildings are likely not to perform well in an earthquake, but the school hasn't received any state funds to fix them. We didn't qualify for funding or what was considered by those standards that DSA put out as a seismically vulnerable critical site. 
In fact, an analysis by California Watch shows just 38 of the 7,500 most vulnerable school buildings even qualified for funding. Why? To be eligible, a district had to show that an earthquake would subject a school to an intense level of ground shaking, or what's called G-forces of 1.7 Gs. These are very, very large earthquake forces. That's a requirement some experts say exceeds ground shaking during the 1994 Northridge earthquake, a requirement Yanev says doesn't take all risks into consideration. In fact, some schools that are in lower earthquake areas undoubtedly are higher hazard because they're older, not built as well, built to all the criteria, etc. Undoubtedly are higher hazard. Absolutely, higher hazard. So they have left some schools essentially out of the equation? Uh, I would expect that to be the case, yes. In fact, documents reveal the DSA's own structural engineers recommended using a lower ground shaking number of 1.35 Gs. So what led the state to set the number so much higher? Liability. Documents show state officials worried that with a lower number, too many schools would be classified as vulnerable and yet sit unaddressed. You've suddenly created a unfunded liability for which somebody has got to be responsible. So to avoid that, documents show state officials simply raised the number to 1.7 Gs to limit the number of schools eligible, despite knowing some at-risk school buildings would not qualify. And Harvey's explanation for raising the number? The rationale was to ensure that we were taking care of the worst of the worst, starting at a point where we would not exhaust the dollars available. So what about the schools left potentially at risk that were shut out of funding? Does that mean that those schools would not be equally vulnerable? No, it does not mean that. Did they know that? You'll have to ask them. So we asked Pomona's Scott Stark. Uh, that's OK. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. There was nothing in, in the guideline that came down to us that said, Oh, by the way, this was based on the fact that that uh, we've only got this, so much money, and so we're trying to exclude school. If assuming what you're telling me is is true, we had no knowledge of that. It's something the legislation sponsor didn't know either. Hearing that information is very shocking. It sounds like they weren't doing the best they could have been doing for our children, and that should never be the case here, ever. In the end, just two schools got that state funding. Which leads to the real question. Are California schools safe for children when that next big earthquake comes? There, even acting director Harvey admits. I don't really know. I'm hopeful that we have done the best we can to ensure that kids are safe in their schools. Back in Pescadero, that's not a comforting answer. They just don't know. They honestly don't know. And that's the, the scariest thing. That report was based on research done by California Watch, affiliated with the Center on Investigative Reporting. There's a link to more of their reporting on our website.